This eminent metropolitan Nikitas of the Dardanelles, this morning he has come to be with us and to pray with us and to offer the homily as he celebrates a feast of one of the saints of his area, the new martyr Theodore of the Dardanelles. We wish his eminence many years in good health in the service of our Lord, and we thank you once again, your eminence, for your presence and your blessings and the gift that you bring us in your faith. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. And by God's grace and his mercy and love, I am with you on this day when your own father, John, the dear and beloved second priest of the community, is serving in Modesto. Because as you may have heard, Father John Magulias uh, suffered some health issues while driving. And as a result of that, both he and his mother-in-law are in the hospital. And we must remember to pray for them. You see how difficult it is when there is a shortage of not only priests, but good priests, that we must go and substitute and help one another. That is why the mothers must encourage their sons not to specialize in IT or engineering or banking or finance, but to become priests of Christ and preachers of the Word of God. Because banking and finance and engineering and even doctors are well and good as are attorneys, but I seriously doubt that you shall find salvation of your soul through any of them. But through the priests, no matter how sinful they may be, they serve the sacraments of God and they minister to the needs of the people. They baptize our children and they marry us. And of course, they bury us and conduct the memorial services, even as we did earlier. Because the most important thing in the world and that the world needs is Christ and his message of truth. If you looked at this morning's gospel passage, or if you were in church on time, to hear it. You heard about one of the miracles that takes place. We usually don't think about it when we think of the miracles of Christ, because when we think of the great miracles, we think of the blind man, or we think of the lepers. We think of the woman with the issue of blood. But this indeed is a miracle that took place on many levels. If you listen to the gospel passage, you might recall that Christ sent his disciples by ship. And he went alone to pray and to dismiss the crowds. And as his disciples were in the ship, the waters had become turbulent. For scripture says that the wind was against them. And in the middle of the darkness and in the night, they see a figure coming toward them, someone walking on the water, and it was Christ. And Peter said to him, if that is indeed you, Lord, bid me to come out unto you. And Christ called him out, and Peter looked at Christ and began to walk on the waters toward him. At one moment, Peter became doubtful. Confusion entered his mind and his heart. He lost sight of Christ, and he began to sink and to drown. And he called out, Save me, Lord. And Christ reached out and pulled him out of the water and saved him. You see, in our days and lives, we face turbulent waters, we face problems, we face challenges. You don't have to take him out of church. I would rather the children stay in church, they're not the problem. 
the adults are. Because the children learn bad manners from the adults. So in our own lives, we face turbulent waters. We face difficulties and challenges, and into our hearts and into our minds enters that spirit of confusion, <coughs> doubtfulness. And we forget about Christ. We forget that he's the one who gave us strength and the ability to walk. We forget that he's the one who's called us out of the ways of the world. We forget that when we focus on him and look at him and follow his path, we do what is proper and right in life. When we lose sight of Christ, we begin to sink. We fall into the muck and to the mire of this world. And yet, when we call out, save me, Christ reaches out once again and has mercy on us. And he lifts us up, no matter what our sins might be, and he saves us. And he reaches out to you and to me. He reaches out to all of us in this world to pull us out and to be separate. In one of the epistles of St. Paul to the Corinthians, the second one, he says, come out and be separate from among them. And I will be your father and you shall be my sons and my daughters. Touch nothing unclean. And we're called to a life of holiness when he pulls us out from this world. And this life of holiness is Christianity. All of us, though, fall short of the mark of Christianity because of our sins, because of our ways, because of our challenges. We don't rise to that high level of our calling. And yet God and his mercy and his love continue to abide and to forgive and to look gently upon the world. And God, in his mercy, sends the rainbow. <clears throat> You'll tell me it is only something which comes as a result of some scientific formula or expression. But I tell you, the rainbow for me means God's promise of his love and his forgiveness for the world. It's filled with the colors of life, and he shows it to you and to me even when there is not rain sometime coming from the heaven to remind us of his presence. We don't have to look for a scientific explanation for anything and everything. Sometimes we need to have a little bit of faith, just like Peter should have had. He didn't have to question. He didn't have to doubt. All he had to do is look at Christ and know that Christ was there. And Christ was calling out to him to walk on the waters. Christ invites you and me to walk on the waters of life. And the only way that you can walk on the water is if you stay focused and look at him. Keep your attention there. Keep your faith there, your trust. And most importantly, keep your heart there. For where your heart is, your treasure shall be. And in Christ we shall find the kingdom of God. You know, beloved sisters and brothers, that we've entered into the Deca Pendabusto, the 15 days which are dedicated first to the transfiguration of the Lord, and secondly, to the Feast of the Virgin Mary. These are days of fasting and prayer. But I tell you one thing for sure, that food will save no one, but Jesus Christ will. No matter what Peter may have done, or what he may have eaten, or what he may have thought, Without Jesus Christ, he would have not been saved. During these days then dedicated to the Virgin Mary, the mother of all Christians and our hope, don't focus so much on food. Focus on Christ and your faith. Focus on his word 
and try to live it. Be like him, merciful and embracing, gentle and kind. Be like him who went alone to pray at times. And be like him who looked down on Peter and reached up to help him. Help those who are struggling in our world. Not struggling financially or with the difficulties of worldly life, but struggling to find truth and mercy and salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.